I'm Clint and welcome to Swatches live stream number 27. I am Clint Curley, illustrator and art educator, and here on Swatches on this episode we're going to be taking a look at some of the concepts, work in progress, and sketches for you guys, the viewers, are sending in on this particular art challenge. So what is the art challenge? Every two weeks we have an art challenge. There's always one going on. You have two weeks to send in as final. But on the midweek, we will be having uh, just a kind of a review, taking a look at what you guys have, give you some quick feedback on that. Of course, I will also be taking your questions live from the chat if you're going to be joining live. Otherwise, if you're watching the recording, take a look for the timestamps in the description below if you want to jump to any particular you know, time or topic of the video. Otherwise, I will be giving a moment just to double check that the audio, visual, all looks good. Everybody can join into the chat. And then uh, we'll be jumping into it. All right, it looks like... No, I'm going to move this over a little bit. I can't quite see that information over here. Igor, hey, welcome. You're a first up. Good to see you, man. How's it going? So in this particular art challenge, uh, I'll go ahead and pull it over here. You can take a look at it. So what these are based on is the Soaring Crips. It is a fictional write-up of a place, a fantasy location. So it is an environment concept. And they're also doing little studies. Essentially, the character of Dagon, Stormbrew, from a previous challenge, you had to, you know, create him. Now you're doing one of his illustrations in his journal of what this place looks like. And you're also having to do some little call-out illustrations detailing certain extra little points and that's what they're going to be working on and it'll be like a journal style illustration similar to the lines of these and if you have not been familiar with swatches or watching my videos before uh, a lot of the back and forth goes on during the week over on the facebook group so if you want to join that that is swatches.group it'll link you directly over to the Facebook group. It's free to join, of course, and there's over 500 people out there, a very active group, so I'd be glad to have you out there. Citronius, hey, how's it going? May, uh, Milo's, good to see ya. Yeah, you won't be making it to the next stream. I'll try to post something decent this week for via Facebook. Yeah, well, I, hey, it happens, man. But, uh, of course, these are all recorded. You can just watch them in recording. All Night Design, hey everybody, I uh, couldn't make it for the sketch stage, but I'm going to do a final for next week. Yeah, it's a good point. Guys, if you want to jump in, maybe you just came across my uh, channel, then you don't have to send in a sketch in order to send out a final. You can jump in at any point, as long as you get it in by the deadline, and of course, you know, follows the, the outline as well. Any skill level is welcome, as well as styles and uh, media. So if you want to do traditional media, that's fine as well. Bronze, good to see you. Orenji, Darius, Darius. Yeah, how's it going? Poland. I've never been to Poland. Glad to have a viewer out there. All right. OBS says my stream is green. For some reason, uh, YouTube has given me a yellow bar. I'm not sure what it wants me to do about that. Anyway, that's uh, looks good on my side anyway. Maybe YouTube's just having some trouble. But. Now, I also want to talk about some other stuff. And, of course, just leave it open to uh, taking your questions from the chat and, you know, looking at the other images. So. All right. Soaring Crypt uh, submissions. Stream looks fine here. Good, good. All right. I don't know what's giving me a yellow bar then. Everything looks good from, from this side. All right. Oh, and hey, if you guys are interested in becoming patrons, or some of you are patrons, and you have not noticed the post out there on the Swatches Patreon, I'm going to be opening up two new tiers, okay? It's on a $20 tier and a $40 tier. So if you're wanting to get those feedback of your artwork, like the $40 tier that's already there, I'm opening up three more slots. So you'll want to be able to make sure you're paying attention to that page and when those get open so that you can get in on those. The $20 tier is going to have extra content. You're going to be able to learn from the uh, feedback videos of the other patrons, the other three new $40 patrons. 
You are also going to get the art lessons and assignments. Those don't come with feedback. They're self-study. But if you're just wanting something to keep you going, sharpen your skills, give you some more foundation, then consider checking out that new tier uh, probably during this week. I'm not sure exactly which day that's going up, but it'll be uh, this week sometime. All right, so not a lot of submissions this week. Uh, maybe just people got a lot really busy, but this we got 15, I think. So this is them all, and I'll be able to just go through these fairly quickly. I don't want to spend the whole time on it, but here we go. So uh, just going alphabetically, I got a... You are new to uh, swatches, if I recall. But I appreciate you uh, jumping right in and doing a concept. So that's, that's great. I like it. And you've even did the uh, version, moving it over here to the page of the journal. That's cool. <laughs> Checked out your name. Okay. So uh, the idea being that there is this place called the Sauron Crypts. And the crypts are basically vertical stone structures that are individual tombs that this royal family would be buried in. Each person would have their own. And at a distance, it looks mm, kind of like a forest of, of stone trees or, or pillars. So I didn't go in great depths describing what they look like. So we do have a lot of really cool variations. And I'm a, I think it's cool just seeing the way you guys take this. So you've got a mix of basically two different things going on here. You have the obelisk, which I missed in the description, as well as the kind of big round tower uh, tomb buildings. And on one hand, that's cool. On the other hand, you've got a really fighting shape language here that the, the architecture design does not mesh between the two of these. This is very angular. This is triangles and rectangles and flat sides. And this is highly rounded. So uh, those don't really meet. This is like obviously, you know, a very Egyptian style. This is a very European style kind of architecture if you're gonna put it in earth history. So try to find something in between there because there's not a lot of that in our actual history. So find something that would bridge these two across, like maybe a rounded section that, you know, turns into a square shape or back and forth um, or find find something in there or, or decide to go with one flat one and then one like rounded one um, or, you know, just pick one or the other. Aside from that, um, I'm liking it. Okay. If you're going to have this, let's make sure we have more of those types of structures. Also, make sure you're using actual uh, good reference for the colors. Let's try to bring a little more believability. It's very overpowered right now. Straight yellows or uh, and violets and reds and oranges and blues. Um, find something, try to give a little more subtlety to it. If you want the full description or if you want to join the challenge and you need the full description, just go out to the Facebook group and it's listed out there and the upload folders listed out there and all that. So there you go. Alessandra Gava just did a black and white sketch. Uh, time was probably limited. So, oh yeah. Another thing about the challenge is that you do the one major scene of the environment, your traditional environment concept scene from ground level, and then you do a call out of one of the crypts, crypt towers, and then one of the other items from the list. Uh, the other items could be a dangerous rope bridge they had across, a poisonous local plant that he saw, some sort of vermin creature that lives in the marshy areas, a curious marker stone, or a crypt carving with gold leafing that was particularly interesting. And so here she chose what would be some sort of poisonous plant. I have to say, I like your plant. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of good shapes to it, a lot of good curves to it. It's it's believable. And I, yeah, I'm curious to see where you go with the color. This is something that I want to go ahead and note for pretty much everybody who wants to do this challenge. Try to get some variance to your ground, okay? 
I know that there's a lot of areas that are flat. And initially, one of the first things you want to do with an environment is to make it flat. But flat is boring in most cases. So if you can add elevation changes, that's going to give a lot more interest to your piece. It's going to give volume. It's going to give better distance. And you're going to be able to draw out more compositional uh, designs with that. So this is a good idea. You have this one closer and it's nice and big. And you're kind of offsetting that with the heel on the other side that has the smaller shapes on it. So this one, you'd probably have like a little break of light coming in through the overcast or mist and giving us plenty of nice brighter detail over here. And then probably letting these just go into more silhouette, not black silhouette, but just keep them shadowed back. So you just get this beautiful set of shapes off of those guys. And then somewhere in the middle for the rest of them, yeah. That's working here. Uh, yeah, you're kind of doing the same thing that I mentioned on the other one. You're, you're mixing your rounds and your square shapes. So that's pretty cool. Um, you go in with more of the geometric shapes down in here. I like that. That's cool. Uh, see if you can't bring in a little more hint towards maybe a character, a face, a hand. Some sort of simple imagery that would kind of indicate a person, maybe their role. Maybe if he was the, you know, the master at arms, there would be like a, a hand on it. If he was uh, the king, maybe it would have his profile. You know, each one of them would have some sort of relief. Now, it's not like a full sculpture. It's like a relief draw, uh, etching, right, in the stonework. You can consider going that way. All right, nice. Boy Sets Fire 22, Lucas. All right, multi-concepts here. I enjoy seeing these. We've got a couple of these submitted in. So let's break them down. Uh, which ones are we liking? What are we liking about them? Now, this one originally is kind of what I... Uh, this is kind of what I mentioned a moment ago. Very flat. It's got the right elements, right? So it's kind of a forest of stones, and a, a pillars of stones and it's got the mist like i described but it's just so straightforward um let's find something more interesting this is more interesting this light kind of raking across them and highlighting that mist in between them i like that so it's a better mood um this is curious not one i would normally think of but i you could take that idea a little do it a little differently Get that plane and shift it so it's not flat. Give a little angle to it. And then let some plants be growing up around it. And maybe have some, you know, vines hanging off of this. So this is starting to become almost a natural piece of the landscape over time. This thing's fallen over and now, now the vines are like, oh, we can crawl up that. And maybe creatures could be living around this thing too. So it starts becoming this little habitat. Yeah and these guys in the background okay yeah maybe if you're going to add like some plants make sure you add them to the, some of the rest of them too and then break it up with some nice big shapes back here or give me a nice big hill in the background something else so you, you don't need to have as much detail as obviously these guys but uh give me give me something there yeah uh so that is some promise uh that one's that one's pretty good too this one, I think it's just, we see too far. We shouldn't be able to see all of the crypts at one time because there's constantly like this haze. So you're, you're, you lose track of where you are kind of in this place. Uh, okay. But we need, I like the shapes of these better. Like these are just very straightforward shapes. So I like these better. It has a more of a sense of culture to it. Okay. These hills are interesting. I do want to give you props on doing hills that most people don't do. Most people just do your perfect little rounded heel. And these are more like, what do they call it? Buttes? The way that those forms. And I personally, I like that. And if you kind of mixed these two together, I think you'd be on the right track. Get the ground to be interesting and get the, the structures to be interesting too. Um, that's not a bad idea right here either. Uh, but make sure that there is enough light 
around one of these that we can see some detail. Or you could even treat it like uh, Dagon had left a torch there. And so we've got torch fire burning and you can see the light on one of them from that. That could work as well. All right, next up. Citronius. Yeah, you're in the chat. Okay, cool. Citronius, go ahead and give us uh, both of these full color and give us some notes. Uh, I've got to open that up in order to actually zoom in on it. Here we go. All right, so we have the call out of the individual um, crypt tower. Materials making the top of the structure seem relatively shiny and moss free. All right, so it has more maybe of a metal instead of a stone. That's cool. I have carved out a chunk of it for further inspection. It might hold significant value on its own. All right, I'll, yeah, you're making notes like, like Dagon, where he's like, eh, this could be valuable. I don't know what it is. Uh, random markings on the circle might hold the secret to the rank of the people buried within. If I could decipher what they mean, it would save precious time by directing me to the crypts, holding the best loot. Ah, that's good thinking. Yeah, yeah, deciphering it, so it uses his time better. These crypts are obviously very ancient, as evidenced by the numerous cracks, the wear on the material, and the takeover of moss and plant life. Yeah, he's trying to place the date on it. He's a businessman. Dagon's a businessman, right? He's an adventurer. But he's out for profit, so the better that he can uh, put a date on it, put a value on it, and know the history of it, the more money he can make off of his loot. All right, we've got the plant. Beware, this plant is extremely poisonous. A uh, mere touch by one of these needles could kill a grown man within minutes. No known antidote. The fruit, if you can get it without dying, uh, may be used to brew a very potent fertility potion. So eating it raw would result in a nigh instant death. The texture and shape of the leaves is disinviting, but they are actually quite harmless. All right, let's go. Uh, any notes on this one? Uh, at a distance, these huge structures can be mistaken for odd looking trees. Okay, so I just wanted to read that out first and then come back and start kind of looking at the artistic side. All right, I like the layer of age. You're accounting for the cracks. You're accounting for moss, a little uh, uh, viney, hangy, long grass stuff. I like the interplay that there were some like metal pieces and stone pieces and whatever this is. I don't know what you're thinking that is. It could be like a brass that's become very patina. That could work, or it could be like a colored glass or a painting. Something you might think about is like tile. And actually, the rest of you guys might think about this. Maybe they use tile for the color. And so a lot of the tile has fallen away. But then you can get these sort of broken mosaics, right? Where part of it is there and part of it isn't. You can see the part that's broken off. That could work as well. Uh, the design here, I kind of like the top of it. I don't know what these two things are for. Um, you... I like the idea of the metal, but this um, has a frog face look to it, if that makes sense. Like, you've got a frog eye, frog eye, and this has, like, a downturned mouth. So you, you probably want to play with those shapes so that you come up with something a little different than that. But uh, otherwise, these shapes, they're not really working. They seem really arbitrary uh, and not like a good craftsman quality that would be befitting for a royalty so let's see if we can find some architectural um inspiration look at different cultures throughout history uh it doesn't necessarily have to look at like a crypt you can look at any kind of palace or even uh archi i would say not architecture but like carving and designs on uh, fancy pieces of, of chairs and tables and old Victorian stuff like that. Those can have some neat shapes. Look at some ancient uh, civilizations like Aztec and Mayan and see some of the shapes that they use. So, yeah, yeah, go, go look at that stuff. Uh, plants. Okay. Uh, short plant, big bulb. Well, I think this is a good first pass, but it's almost overly simple. Right? It's just like it's so round. Uh, but if this part, if these little things, 
uh, let's see if we can do something a little different with that. I don't know if you're going with like a, a translucent ball thing, but even if we made it more of a teardrop shape, it wouldn't just be that perfect circle. Like it would have a weight to it, right? Like it would come down and maybe it, it formed like a bulb or it had a teardrop shape or there's little other ones kind of pulling off of it. Um, another thing is like the leaves. If you let the leaves get to a different color as they come out to the edges, a lot of poisonous animals, um, some poisonous plants are known by what? Their color, right? A lot of poisonous frogs are very distinctive and you can notice them and know they're poisonous because of the vibrancy of their color. Nature kind of uses that bright color as a way to warn you not to eat those things. In the same way, you might be able to do that with those leaves and bring in a little extra color to those as well. Okay, and this down here, uh, I'm not going to touch back on those. that We kind of already did that. Uh, just as far as composing your scene, make sure that we don't have them all turned exactly the same. Right? So let's let's make sure they're not all fully facing you that way. And uh, so, like, there's these things. Like, make sure some of them are kind of sideways. And then... I like this. I like these big roots. That's pretty neat. Uh, but if you're going to do that, maybe give me a tree or something. Where, where are these roots going to? Not just roots, right? So where are some of these plants? Or maybe maybe it's some sort of um, ground, giant ground vine. And that could be cool. So basically, it's this huge tangled of, of what looks like roots, but they're just vines that, that grow across the ground, except they're like, you know, this big. And you can do that, but make sure that they, I don't know, maybe they have spikes on them, or maybe they have big leaves on them. And that's something that would be nice on that. Uh, we have a lot of hard textures in this scene. You could think about adding some, like, ferns. Ferns might work well. Big fern leaves. And I do like the inclusion of the man uh, for sky uh, scale reference. Uh, Radical has a good comment here. The sky is too happy. Yeah, we've got a very... Uh, we have a very kind of clear, sunny day going on. And let's tone the mood back. This place is... It's not happy. It is bordering on ominous. It's just quiet. It's almost like unusually quiet. It is... A little dark it's misty um, and it's always kind of in that twilight time right so let's let's give it a little more ominous mystery to it and uh, yeah I, I think you're good I, I like that keep keep going on that line all right spent quite a bit on that but Holly all right Holly give us a whole nine breakdown here say same sort of thing you know just as the artist in me as the art lover in me I I like looking at all this stuff. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I, I do this stream, right? Just for me, because I like seeing concepts. Okay, so what do we like? What do we like? Okay, got this big one. Looking through an archway at it. Got these guys. Uh, some sort of bridge thing going on. Almost like a inside of a building. That one's similar to this one. Uh, definitely going darker, though. Da, 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 da. you got, like, two major ones up at the top. Uh, that's a curious idea, kind of making them in kind of like a spoke design up to the top of the hill. That, yeah, that, that would make sense, right? I mean, this is a, maybe an advanced civilization, and, and, you know, they pattern out how these work. Okay, um, so this is what I'm thinking. Uh, I like that you have this thing in the foreground. You have like these rocks, some plants, and a vine in the foreground. It helps to give dimensionality to the scene. That's a good move. I like that this guy's nice and close. We can get some detail on him. I then let it drift away. That's cool. Um, I like this, that you have not kept them all completely upright. I don't think that they should all be, you know... All, all leaning and, and misaligned, but certainly some of them. I think those in areas that it looks like it's eroding. So if the hillside of one looks like it's eroding away, yeah, let it lean a little bit. 
if it's maybe down here on the bottom like this guy where there's it's constantly wet and the soil is very soft yeah it would make sense it'd start leaning maybe the ones up on the rocks or higher up on the hills they would stay straight right just logically kind of thinking about that so i like that direction uh another copy down here kind of follows uh my thought is the first one here on that second row however holly if you can do this if you can mix the uh the rope bridge into the scene with the crypts i think that's a golden opportunity right there that i haven't seen somebody else do and that could really be a good selling point and i would be okay if you added the two of those together okay you wouldn't necessarily have to do another one just for the rope bridge but say even like in this if you got this one as the foreground you've got a uh, rope uh vine here you've got this plant uh, then this was a chasm uh, then the rope bridge went across to the other side of the soaring crypts so in order to reach this side over here you had to go across the rope bridge but make sure the rope bridge isn't like flat right let it have you know a downward or an upward thing to it again changing elevations you're leading your eye. You're letting the, the person almost as if they were a player in the game. And you imagine, oh, going up that hill, then looking at that vista, and imagine going down this and exploring this spot. And you create these little areas for the, the viewers to essentially explore as they're taking the path through the scene, which you can't really do when you just keep everything flat and static, right? So that is that's an idea or you could do like a, a double rope bridge right it goes over and maybe it goes to one of the towers uh, maybe that tower has like a a ring around it and you can and it goes to that ring and you would go off the other side of the tower on another rope bridge to another spot anyway so many ways that you could take that but hopefully that helps you out igor okay Igor, uh, like the other guys already said on the Facebook, uh, excellent line work here. I like the designs. Uh, this is pretty close to what I was originally thinking. Um, probably closer to that one than this one, but that's that's you know neither here nor there. Uh, they both completely fit. So you're letting them worn down. Uh, I like these sort of design work, whatever style you came up with for that. The big curvy bits with the doors sort of worked into the design uh, and you got the marker stone here that has the character on it with some skulls and stuff all right like that now seeing here i feel like we need to definitely populate this with more of them okay we're not really getting the forced feel of it uh they seem pretty scattered about although this guy's is really close to the mood uh no colors in here but just value-wise, this is a really good deal of the mood. That it's not so dark that we're losing stuff to the blackness. But it's not so lit that you necessarily feel like it's a cheerful and inviting place. So that's a good balance here. Uh, I would say we need to get some of these. Like this guy, run him big enough that the top of him is just going off the page. We need to be able to see one of them nice and big. And then it will make this feel like it's even further away in the background because we're equating this size to the ones back there. Uh, then that one needs to be like half that size. And then let's add some more. Uh, and I like the shape variation. Like some of them are like more upright. Some of them are kind of like this. And you could even consider like on these, I think what would kind of fit yours is even if you move the door part way up and it had like a a staircase or a ramp that sort of led up to the door just to break up the super simple kind of tombstone shapes so you could have like a like a little line coming off of it which would be the the ramps or staircase or maybe that there is uh, an archway in front of each one of them and you don't know why it needs the archway it just you know they do it just add these the smaller shapes against the bigger shapes essentially so igor excellent i'm sure you'll do awesome with it you've been doing some killer stuff and i look forward to seeing your stuff every week truly do jeremy all right let's pull this up 
Uh, Sam says, uh, the composition of this one is really good too. Talking about Eeyore's, I believe. Uh, the hill takes the viewer's eye down into the monoliths and pass, which in turn trap the eye in the place. Yeah, yeah, it's really good uh, composition. And it's worth paying attention to. Again, he's got this nice big one on this side. And then that offsets the heel pointing over to it, right? So we get the payoff by looking at this. And the path, obviously, I mean, it's an old, old technique. But it's a very effective one. It's one worth using a path to lead the eye through the scene. So excellent use there. All right, uh, going this way. Jeremy was next, yes. All right, so Jeremy... Are you already doing what I was talking about on the other one? Give me some elevation change. This one is even like a more serious elevation change where there's steps going up. Dude, go with it. I like it. I like it. That's a good move. Uh, make sure the steps aren't completely sideways to us on all of them. Uh, make it like this one looks like it's kind of going up at an angle. That's good. Uh, this one, make it either kind of slightly coming to us or slightly going away from us. Uh, then that one is sort of three quarters, so that's excellent. So very good there. Uh, big tower here looks like that one. Maybe like the door is open or something. Okay. Uh, then you got these big trees coming around here. I like that too. That's a good addition. Uh, reminds me of some of the old uh, what like the Angkor Wat temples over in I want to say it's Cambodia. If you haven't looked at those reference up. In fact, if that's that's probably where you got your idea. But if you have not looked those up, then make sure you go take a look at those because it has those sorts of trees that are wrapping their roots around these buildings. And I think that would be very fitting for this. So this is sort of like a secluded little... Uh, what would you call it? Uh, oh, it's not, it's not a cave. Secluded little glen in this. And I like that. You got some trees here. You got the coverage of the trees so there's just a little lights breaking in here. And uh, yeah, let's see some maybe stonework on the ground. But most of it's been covered up. And make sure if we're going to have these trees, we're probably going to have some other smaller plant life. So uh, let's make sure that's put in there. You've got a uh, little design here. Sort of a totem Aztec thing going on. I like that. Make sure you carry that out. And even if you start putting in like fictional writing right uh it looks like writing at a distance but obviously it's just gibberish so maybe they write the history of the person around it they they carve it in there but the language has been forgotten right now all you have is this strange script engraved around it and occasionally there's like some big picture uh along with the text uh the plant i like the plant Nice shapes. You get the simple shape and you've broke it up into these individual parts. And you've put the little uh, pieces inside of that. That's good. It's a good collection of shapes. You put the thorns on it, which is a nice indication of its deadliness. And some of the longer little pieces on this. Okay. Uh, leaves. I don't think there's really anything to change on that. I don't know what you're going to do with coloring. Uh, you might consider making these, give these like a little curve to them. Like, you don't necessarily put spikes all the way around them, but give them something other than just the perfect little curved leaf. Uh, these are already mimicking that shape so close. Let's give these something else. Uh, like it comes along, maybe it has one little serration on it, or it has one little, you know, dip in it somewhere. That's a small thing, but yeah, consider that. All right, Jeremy, who's after you? We have Mikolaj. All right, so main scene down here. We have the Crypt Tower and the Rope Bridge. Excellent. Uh, not the door and the door. And, uh, happy face Dagon. Okay, cool. I like the tower. Okay, I like the, uh, the crypt tower. And that's pretty cool. It's got a definitive architectural style to it. 
and I appreciate that. Basically, you've got like a round, and then you have the columns outside of that, and those are round. And it's got the dome on the top. That's cool. And you've got these statues on each one of these. I like that. Uh, this feels a little too simple. Like, I would expect to see maybe this would come up here and then pull out again. And would have like some under shapes going along here and uh, that's a small thing i think you can just play that up a little bit more something going on there i don't know what you're going to be doing with the roof are you going to have just like flat the flat stone roofs that that that's okay like up here or like maybe tiles i didn't know what you're going to be going with that um but that's pretty cool make sure that you beat them up though these are hundreds of years old these guys are weathered they've not been taken care of so some of these, you know, they're like this beautiful, uh, <laughs> did you put swatches on there? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I just now see that. It says swatches. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Are you trying to put my swatches in a tomb? Is that what you're doing? Are you saying swatches died and you put him in a tomb? I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about that, maybe that's not a nice thing. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, yeah, make sure, like, some of these pieces have broken off. Uh, we've got maybe little grasses growing up inside of this part where, you know, some dirt has collected up in there. Uh, think about where maybe water has rushed down and dirt has built up along it. So it's not even, right? The dirt has come up and, like, come across it and, and buried part of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, make sure you beat them up enough. Um, the rope bridge, I like this. Because, dude, that seems dangerous. And letting that go off into the fog, that's questionable, right? Uh, <laughs> Samurai Jack. I'm sorry, I have to mention Samurai Jack. The old uh, Samurai Jack show where Samurai has to go fight the Scotsman on the bridge. <laughs> and, and the bridge is so long, it would like take a day to walk to the end and he won't. They won't pass each other because they're both too proud and they, like, fight for an entire day. <laughs> that was a great episode. If you've not seen Samurai Jack fighting the Scots on the bridge, you gotta go watch that. Okay, moving on. Uh, I mean, that's good. I think you're on the right track with that. Um, you might want to put in, like, a tree because trees grow vertical. And that would help me know what the orientation of the scene is. I feel like I'm looking down, but if I had a tree or two coming and following perspective, it would help sell that for me because I don't have any other point of reference for what is vertical or horizontal. Okay, uh, this scene, okay, um, good and bad, okay. It is really cluttered right now, and I think you need to approach it a little bit more like some of these other ones where we've got some in the foreground some in the background so these are all basically the same size in our scene and we don't necessarily want that we want like a nice big one that's closer to us and uh, then you let that proportion and perspective carry along into the distance and they didn't build i feel like <clears throat> these were just placed there like somebody tossed them out uh, rather than built there like that. Uh, it's okay if it has like a little lean to some of them, but these look completely haphazard. If you're going to put them on a hill like this, then try to make it look like the hill was at one time landscaped so that this was a little plateau and there were steps leading up to it. And that one was quite upright at the time, but then it started to slip a little bit. And then this stairway has been washed away. And then, so you essentially sketch out what it would look like fresh and then start weathering it down weathering it down that can be a good way to arrive at uh, a believable conclusion all right next row kafoski welcome how's it going sam reeves hey we're sam just doing good uh marco i haven't seen you in here i uh, just noticed you good to have you all right so monica b Monica B. All right, got a big scene, the call out of the tower, and we got some plants. All right, so 
For your big scene, you've gone for the much more boggy, marshy place. And I did mention that, so I am just fine with that approach. Um, right now, it feels a little too separated. You've got this, you've got this, you've got this. Uh, it feels a little more like a river than it feels like a marsh. So make sure you're looking up some good references for marshes. Or maybe look up references for like the wetlands down in Florida. And how it's like semi-permanent, semi-dry uh, and wet and... This shell will have like tall grasses in it, and parts of it you can see water, and parts of it are grasses. Um, and otherwise, it feels like somebody like came in here and just chopped down everything in the water areas. So let's make that uh, kind of bleed those areas together a little bit. Um, big trees up around these. I kind of like that idea. Um, make sure you're playing with your tree shapes, though. Give me, give me something kind of interesting with those. Maybe they come up and they kind of form like flat um, uh, limb, uh, leaf. I don't know what you call it. Like a leaf group? Limb where they make the leaves? Uh, some, some more interesting shape there. Or let it grow tall enough that it goes out of the scene. So that they're very tall, kind of skinny uh, groups or like make them very flat and wide right now. It's sort of it's not flat and wide. It's not tall and skinny It's it's not like um, Well, you could do it almost like a uh, The little uh, Like Asian tree bonsai trees, but they're really big right and they just have these beautiful great uh, Twists to them and so they just have these really cool shapes where they're like er, er, and they're leaning over right and they get these long limbs that reach out and dip beautiful uh curving shapes and on that uh so yeah okay that's good i think the mood is established pretty well obviously you just give it a quick pass but you're on the right line so you should be fine there uh for the crepes you've got basically a tower uh, a couple of slits in it uh you're looking at i think you're saying six meters here lies Mika, Baktu, and her loyal servants. Oh, buried with the servants. Oh, they did that a lot. That's true. Uh, entrance is hidden in the figure and signs. Yeah, the signs are a nice addition, too. Yeah, I think that would be something that maybe they'd put even candles on, or that's where they put flowers or something. Um, this... I think you need more work on it. Like, I like the figure. I like this. Uh, I'm not sure how the top of this is working. I didn't feel like necessarily it was eroded away. Uh, if it is eroded away, then make sure we've got, like, some moss or something else showing us kind of why that got eroded away. And then also, if it is missing rock, then show me the rocks on the ground, right? So if some of them have fallen down, where did they fall to? They're on the ground somewhere. And then you want to show those, you know, half hidden in the the ground because the ground's uh, kind of going around them. All right, next up, Ricardo. A sort of Egyptian style, but uh, almost curvy uh, wing forms to it. I've got to say, Ricardo, I'm liking this. This is pretty cool. Uh, Radical, uh, you swatches when you do... Oh, okay. When you say swatches in the chat, it flags it in orange and I automatically notice it so otherwise i'm not reading most of the chat you want to get my attention put swatches in the chat uh in your tag okay uh ricardo yeah if you've got i feel like maybe you're going with a, a really big indoor place that has all of these in it and if handled well that's okay i was i'm pretty much thinking an outdoor thing but if you want to do, and you can pull off, an indoor-outdoor sort of mesh, that could be really neat. And that would be worth trying. Or maybe some of them are so big, it almost makes it feel like you're indoors. 
Um, these have a nice shape to them. They have a distinct architecture to them. So I like that. I would suggest not... Well, I think you're indicating like some sort of engraving on these. Like this is some sort of language, kind of like what I was talking earlier. And I think that is a good idea. Don't use it everywhere. All right. If you do it everywhere, it just gets really busy. So if you just put it like on this area, and then maybe on one of these, that would be good. Then let the rest of this have simpler forms so that there is simple and contrasting detail along. Uh, Agata says, uh, Swatches, how would you watermark your work created for a new client? I am looking for the way to save my work, but in the successful but not intrude way. Well, I generally don't watermark anything. Um, I'll, <laughs> it's like, generally, if you go out to a professional site like, say, ArtStation, that has a lot of professionals out there. Well, it's not a professional site. There's a lot of professionals on ArtStation. Practically nobody watermarks their stuff. But if you go out to a site where there's, like, a lot of student work or junior work, then you see people watermarking stuff all the time. It's like, I tell you what. It's actually a lot less likely they're going to steal your stuff than my stuff. Um, but if you're kind of talking about how to just keep your stuff safer from a client, one, I've, okay, so I'm just guessing here. If you're working with a client and you've got a commission and you're needing to send them some files, but you don't want to necessarily hand them over because you're not, you don't have money yet, there's a couple of things you need to think about. One is you collect half the money up front. That way that you both have skin in the game, as they would say. And you know that they're serious. And if they're not willing to put up half money up front, then they don't need to be your client. You need to move on. And they need to move on as well. Number two is you can send them sketches, but make, or you can even send them a copy of the final, but it's low res. It's lower res than they can use for whatever purpose they want to use it for. If they're going to make, um, you know prints of it then you don't give them a 300 dpi full resolution you give them like a 700 pixel picture of it and at you know 700 800 pixels you can tell if the image is good or not and that's fine they can okay that and then you say you know upon receipt of the um the payment you know paypal whatever you're doing then i will send along the final and that's cool just make sure that that is established if you can before you get started just everybody has the same expectations going into this but if you're really uh trying to make sure that they're not going to steal it or you think that they are going to steal it yeah you could watermark it before you send it to them or you could send them like a higher res version and say, I need a higher res version and before I can okay it. Okay, say, I'll be happy to send you the high res version, but I will be watermarking it. And then you do that. And that's fine. Um, just, you know, make sure you don't let one somebody pull something over and you on that. Okay, back to Ricardo's here. And oh, excellent question too. Uh, I think a lot of you guys are starting to pick up some work, uh, professional work. And that's awesome. I love to know that. I love that you're... Hard work is paying off, and uh, it's a good question. So uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm liking a lot of this. Um, this is an interesting shape that's not really used elsewhere too much. Like I would be curious to see maybe this shape mimicked somewhere else, like up here. Maybe it's a it's a reoccurring shape. That's in some of the the detail work or patterned into some of the rest of this. That would be interesting to see. Um, what else? Distinct lack of any vegetation. So let's see some more of that. Uh, let's definitely see some more vegetation. This isn't doing much for us. If... Like, I, I'm not sold that I need this one here like this. It's, it's right in the center, and it's just the top of it, and it doesn't tell me anything. If, however, we change this so that we got some nice plants here, right here in the foreground, a couple of feet from us, then 
Even you could even put a rope bridge like right here. Just have a rope bridge like this is a little landing rope bridge across to this, and this isn't a tomb. This is a, a pedestal that leads off, and then there's like a you know steps down from here or something. Um, that could work well. I did notice a comment just out of the corner of my eye. Um, Sam says, "Yeah, the doorway is a dead-on coffin shape. It screams tomb subliminally." Yeah, the same thing crossed my mind, Sam, and that's why I'm thinking it would be great to reuse it. This is coffin. We recognize that as a coffin shape. Whether we notice it, like you say, consciously or not, and it's a great tool that you've used that. and you, I think you put it in there intentionally. So, uh, you know, reusing it a little bit would be great. Um, if you're not going to turn that into like something else, I don't know that you need it there. Or show me the ground as it's coming down here and give me a path to lead me into the scene. And that's one of the problems with this scene. I like almost all of this, except for as a viewer, I don't feel like I could go explore it. There is no path down. There's no way to venture down there. So, you know, um, I really can't say much about this, man. I'm, I'm liking this, just that uh, inscription thing that I was kind of talking about. And uh, try to use a couple of different kinds of materials mainly stone consider adding in some metal some tile work um you know like painted tiles that they would have on there to add some color maybe some faded gold um yeah maybe brackets for torches that used to be on there yeah any of that sort of stuff okay uh, and russ russ you gave us a mouse i love it yeah he could be definitely a little marshy creature but give me a little variation of mouse. This is this is fantasy, right? So uh, he's got something else about him. You know, like if you got like a mouse, and you crossed his features ever so much with a fox, and you have like a litty little mini mouse fox, that would that would be great. That would be so cool. Uh, so consider doing something like that. Or it's like a mouse, but it has an unusual coloring that we're not used to seeing. And it has, like, patterning on it that we don't normally see. Or it has, uh, uh, you know, like, hair shape that we don't see. Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, so just yeah, tweak it and, and bring in some other little element to it. But uh, I like him. He's cool. Um, I also like these. That essentially the tower is the front of the crypt. And the crypt is a longer structure that goes out the back of the uh, the tower. That's cool. Um, I'm, I'm behind that. I think that can definitely work. I feel like you need to rework the composition, though. This feels... This feels pretty straightforward. Um, again, like flat ground. And I, I'm not going to say too much about the mood. There's not enough value or, or lighting established for me to really make a judgment about that. Uh, but let's give some elevation changes to the ground so that it's not all completely uh, flat like this. And I also feel like we're this is too much third person. All right, I feel like we're up high and we're kind of looking down on this scene. But I want you to put me in that scene. I want this not to be third person, but first person. And we can do that. That's We can leave most of it the same. But make maybe this whole area here is a tower right here next to me. Or I'm on a, a pedestal and there's steps leading down. And then there are some plants here. Something that puts me right in the scene. And I know my immediate surroundings. And I can equate them to the size of the other things in the scene. Now you do have the little figure down here. That's good. Uh, even if you want to put, like, Daphne and, and Dagon in it, you could do that as well. Um, it looks like maybe you're doing, like, multiple suns or moons. That's fun. That, that can be interesting. Yeah. All right, keep going with that. Uh, this is... I'm, I'm okay with architecture. You basically have these... It kind of looks like they're three-sided um, towers. And a lot of the engravings kind of going over the history of this person and what they were known for. That's fine. These, I think, are perhaps a little too literal. And so let's 
let's simplify those figures. Look at some of the ancient drawings and um, designs of, of statues. And let, let's simplify that. So you, you get the idea of that and you turn them into shapes. And you simplify it and you make them like geometric. So you still get the feeling of a, a you know, it's representing a person, but it's not a statue of a person. Okay, Sam, you said, uh, you said, I <laughs> Sam says, you said, too much third person. Should the viewer be a part of the story? You are essentially, yes, because you are essentially giving the viewpoint of Dagon as he would be there in first person. So that's what I'm looking for. Put me in the scene as if I was there as him. Next up, Citronius. I think I hit the wrong button. Oh, it, it jumped. Okay. Uh, Stefan, you are killing it yet again, man. Awesome. Coito. Uh, Metatron says, uh, Swatches, thank you so much for the info. I'll work on fixing this uh, next week. Oh, you're Russ. Hey, Russ. Metatron, uh, good to have you. And yeah, hopefully those will help you out. Uh, looking forward to see what you do with it. Uh, Stefan, uh, killer work as usual. Um, dude, this is professional. And a shout out to everybody else. Hey, this is professional work. All right, this is how you approach it. Um, this is this is how you kill it. Uh, look what he's doing right and go for it. As he says down here, uh, I heard you like sketches. Uh, which one should I continue working on or fits the topic the best? So this is worth hanging around on for a bit and talking through these. So let's go through them. Uh, this one is... <clears throat> Well, for one, the dude uses references. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I've not verified it. But I'm like really, really sure he used some sort of references for these because the color schemes are super accurate. Uh, you can get away with it without if you've done enough uh, environment studies. I could get really close without having to, but. If you haven't done a lot of environment studies, then use references to try to get this. Um, now, there none of these are actually that detailed. Let me pull it up and uh, zoom in more, and you can see. So this is actually quite rough. Look at that. There's, it's just scribbles. And it's an amazing what you can do with scribbles. And I love your funny face here. That That's great. Um, learn the art of scribbles. Scribbles can be a great way to not overthink something and give an amount of randomness. Just, just kind of going into it. But it has to be the right color, and it has to be in the right value, and it has to be in the right place. Uh, then that scribble can suddenly become... A collection of rocks it can become some plants it can become whatever it needs to be so over here uh let's let's back up so that we can see it like that okay so on this one what am i liking what am i having issues with again kind of coming back to this one feels a bit too flat i like the elevation change of this one better uh the the lighting is killer on it though uh the both all of these have excellent lighting and these all, uh, these two have the right mood. Uh, I think this one is too, it's too bright, right? It's uh, it's a little too positive. I and mean, I would be okay with that if you gave me some low clouds. Give me some low clouds across this. We can see some of the brighter light back here in the background uh, breaking through. But give me some low clouds like obscuring the top of that mountain. And then cutting across a little bit. And then I'd be like, okay, some areas have a, a low cloud fog, mist. And then other areas, it breaks open and we have a better view like these. Um, this is pretty close as well. I, I love the colors in this. I just think it's a little, doesn't quite fit what we're looking for. Uh, so uh, this is good. I like the groundwork you're doing here. That is, you've got the right amount of wet reflection and some little plant life and some just ugly little viney shrubby stuff and then the tops of things of course have some little plants on them the birds excellent addition brings a little life to the place it's not completely dead right the birds let us know that there is 
some life still here. Uh, this is good. I like the composition. You're leading me right into the scene. This one doesn't lead me into the scene as much. I kind of like, er, and then I've kind of seen everything. But this one, this one I get to explore a little longer. I get to follow it along and imagine what it's like. Um, I like the plant life version of this one better. And maybe add in a bit more of that touch with these smaller vines. I particularly like these uh, smaller line shapes in contrast to these nice big bulky shapes that you have. And that would be a good combination. Uh, I cannot diss this one though. It has a sort of uh, inside, a, like they, they put these things inside of a giant cavern. And I'm totally fine if you want to go it that way. All right, so it could be these caverns that are just so big that it almost feels like you're outside. Like the mist comes in and you can't even see the ceiling. You can't see the, the walls. Um, the lighting on this is very good. All right, guys, this is good use of lighting, all of these. And this one comes, the strength comes from not having the same light on everything. It's being added purposefully in certain areas in order to accent the shapes. So the value scheme works well on that. Um, these just look like normal uh, columns. So I'm not really getting the crypt towers that I was thinking of. And that's actually one of the things that I wanted to mention is I feel like these are just big columns. But each one of these needs to have held uh, a, you know, a person in it. So each one of these is basically a tomb in itself and not just a tower marker, like a big tombstone. So uh, I don't know how you're going to handle that. Maybe you just haven't gone into adding those. But it might require pulling in some different shapes. These are all like super, super uh, basic shapes. And so maybe changing them up. Like, almost like if maybe the, the top piece is big and then it kind of narrows down. And you at least have some some architecture kind of silhouette to it uh, would be good. And I kind of mentioned on the other stuff too. Uh, here you have a nice walkway coming up here. And there's like a that going in the background. That's cool. Um, and this one has that. Yeah, and then adding maybe extra little, um, like a courtyard that used to be there that got washed out. Yeah, um, this is like really cool. This is like a just a highland area that these things are on. Um, what would I do here? Maybe little marker stones be good. I almost feel like you could make these bigger though, and and I would still be okay with that. Or putting one right here. Because they're all sort of distance. I'd, I'm not very close to anything here. I'm, I'm quite a way. So you can even crop in on this scene. And it would draw me into the scene. Because almost nothing here right around the edge of this does anything to really add into the scene. So that might just be a better crop if you kind of come in a little bit. Okay, next up. Uh, this one, much more tropical and good use of a texture brush. This is how you do texture brushes right. All right, guys, you can see that. He's got just some brushy textures and scribbled around, made some shapes, followed some good uh, value scheme, and then added in some trunks and some limbs, small shapes into it. Ta-da, trees. Uh, you don't have to draw every leaf using silhouettes and uh, flattening it out. Uh, this is good, too. Um, the plant life. All right, so that, that's fine. You can add that in there. Um, this is like... I feel like this one, too, this is good. That Some of these are closer, and it leads me into it. That one's sort of like, again, third person almost. So I'm going to say, dude, basically, what if you're excited about, Okay. Pretty much all of these are going to fit, and you could take any one of these to final. Uh, this one could even work. I'll say that. This one could even work if you just made 
some of the lit areas as light breaking in through the fog. You've got some god rays coming down, breaking in, and some of this is getting this nice, beautiful light. And then some of it is still covered by the fog, and it, it's a little darker, and it's shaded. And that's fine. Uh, you could you could adapt that one if that one's your favorite. Uh, again, excellent use of, look at the textures, right? Brushes, that's how you use it properly in order to get a lot of uh, appearance very quickly. And, of course, uh, use your refs. Hopefully that helps you. Seal is next. Oh, yeah, I did not open it up that way. Here we go. Uh, pull it up. All right, Seal gave us a collection of six different kinds of uh, towers, a couple of different creatures, and the full scene. Okay. Da -da -da -da. So we're playing around with some different colors. So for these, what am I liking? What am I liking? Okay. I kind of, okay. To start with, I like your mix of how you age these. You've got some serious cracks going up on some of these. You've got some vines. Um, you've got the dirt weathered up on them. I think you're taking that the right direction. You've got the uh, aged colors on it. That's good. A couple of things are standing out to me about these. And this one, like, like these just feel like complete mishmash. Um, remember, this is like a royal family. And they would... They want to show off the craftsmanship. These feel just kind of rounds and curves and kind of like abstract art made 3D sort of thing. Uh, this one has merit in that I get the shape of a person out of it. It's not literal. It's a uh, artistically based. Almost like a head... You know, like a belly, arms crossing. That's what I see when I look at it. I don't even know that that's what you meant. Um, in which case, that could be interesting. Is that it's like a very simplified sitting figure. Right? And that could work. Um, this is also an idea. And maybe that's another variation of this thing. But having like a, a round ball. And then having something connecting it to another round ball. And that. Um, and that can be cool. But let's give the not a round ball part a little more elegance. A little more refinement. And uh, and make it a little more uh, complex compared to the round ball. So that there is a, a difference between those. Uh, of your creatures, I like this little guy the most. Uh, that's one of the reasons I put him in the thumbnail. Um... Legs are pretty good on this. I I don't really get much out of that. I almost feel like he has like pincers on his back or something. Um, uh, just a little leechy thing. Um, don't connect with it as much. I I just find this more interesting. And so he's got like this big sack body back here. And then the hairs. I think the hairs are an interesting idea. Like maybe he uses them like a cat's whiskers. You know and. He can tell what's around him by what these hairs are touching. So, yeah. Good bug designs. Yeah. It's like a Radical says. Uh, now for the scene. Uh, again, I think this is getting a little too positive. We're, we're having too far of a view, right? We should not be able to see this entire place in one, in one shot. The mist. The overcastness. Uh, that's not a word at all. But it limits our field of view. Or distance. So let's ramp up the mood. Let's ramp up the the atmosphere. And we can have some of this going off into the distance. But this is going to become flat and silhouetted. And maybe we have a couple of breaks here or there. But yeah, we're going to lose a lot of that. And we definitely want to play these guys up more. Um, like let these... Or, okay. Let me, let me back up and say it this way. These set in the plane. In, in this visual plane down here. These set in this visual plane. Nothing is breaking across the planes. 
So if this was big enough that it broke up into the plane of the sky, now we have something. Now these shapes really start standing out. Of course, you have to mentally adjust where these are located. So put them on this hillside, but make them stand up and break through you know, some of these other uh, planes. So it's not just about the landscape. I feel like this is a landscape that happens to have some of these tower things in it. But no, it needs to be about these tower things that has a landscape behind it. Just another way of kind of approaching the same thing. And the last one up is Ewan. Ewan, lots of little thumbnails. Let's uh, pull this over and get that a little bigger. Radical says, I have a request. When discussing images like this, could you please zoom in more for us? I usually... Usually everything is very small on screen, plus the stream is 720 and MPEG optimized. Okay, yeah, I'll try to do that. Apologize for uh, not doing that earlier. So we'll start up here. Can, can I zoom in like that? No, that just makes me go like that. Okay. Okay, so lots of little studies not a lot of detail on these simple value scheme studies these are excellent things to do da, da, da. you just i think you made a little brush and just went crazy with it okay 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 um like yeah these aren't doing much for me that's a little better that's that's pretty nice uh i think you you kind of went along with mixing several of these i think you actually went along with that one um the mountain actually back here is a nice addition uh but let's move over and take a look at some of these other ones too okay those are the close-ups of your tower all right so we'll we'll look at that in a little bit all right so we'll focus on your big scene first uh i'm gonna pull this up i don't think they can make that out here we go so Okay, again, we got to remember, these are not just standing stones. These are a tomb in itself. You, you would have an entire person buried inside of one of these towers. So, we got to rethink the size. Like, unless that's a monstrously big bird, uh, there are sizes off. So, you could have like a little marker stone, fine. But then this thing needs to be 20 times bigger for a person to be in there and it be like a standing tomb. Uh, same thing with these. Or the bird needs to be just tiny, tiny. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Yeah, and I feel like you've, you've they're really short and squat and we're looking for more vertical out of it. This is a forest. Remember a forest. Uh, this feels like almost just a, a collection of almost believably organic rocks that just kind of jut up. It needs to be man-made. It needs to be towers. They, they need to be towering, more like trees. Um, so we can go that way. Um, this, I like the elevation change on this better. Uh, it's just that the issue here is like half the image literally is not doing anything for us. All of this sky is not really adding anything. We can get the feeling of uh, the mood without necessarily getting so much sky. Uh, and you've got this one little building down here. I mean, it's cool that you have that, but it's so small and it's so far away that we're not going to get anything out of it. So if you, you know, made another one in mid distance and another one in close, then all of a sudden we can we can start making a pattern out of them. Uh, but right now it feels like you're trying to make this the the focal point because why? That's the only man-made looking unique thing in this image. But it's so tiny that it can't really hold up as a focal point. The other thing that is unique is the bird. And the bird almost feels like he's the focal point of the image. But we can't have that. If you want to have some birds, that's cool. But make sure you have a couple of them here. All right? So that he's not unique. Uniqueness draws uh, attention to itself. 
yeah so we definitely want to move to a man-made forest version rather than just a collection of spiky rocks uh okay the toad i like the rendering on the toad um yeah legit toad uh, some good use of of texture brushes another good use of texture brushes down here um but as far as like marshy creature push it, let's push it a little bit you know look yeah i know what a toad is but but this is fantasy right this is somewhere different this is something we haven't seen before so what is unique about this toad what can you do to it what what other animal can you cross it with you know alligator toad okay uh rhino beetle toad something that makes him look believable but different uh then also again think about colors like poisonous things are often very colorful so what sort of colors could he have uh maybe he's got three eyes and so yeah just let's shift it up a little bit all right and we got the call out of the tower uh yeah again i'm gonna cross that it's too far away it's this is a feature on the tower this also doesn't need i assume that this is the call out for the tower and not not for the whole scene this doesn't necessarily need a background you can just do a tower this is almost like a uh architectural layout this is more like a flat view He's doing a detailed drawing so that he has good uh, he has good records of what these look like, right? So it, it that don't necessarily need to worry about even lighting. It could just be a really good line work with some simple colors on it. Uh, it yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be fully rendered like this is. This is a side study. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, I mean, if you want to show like a little road leading up to it, that that's kind of fine if you want to give it like a little placement. But I, I think we can cancel out most of these because it feels like you're just doing another scene. Um, like that's that's actually pretty good. Like if you put that right over here in this scene, right? And it, you, you know, you put one right up here. And then you at least put a couple more in here as well so that we've got more going on um yeah yeah okay so that is uh that's all the entries yeah that's, that's what we got going on there and we got a full another week on this one for this next week i'm not going to promise right now that the deadline and the stream are going to be at the same time as usual so stay tuned for updates on that on the uh, facebook group i've got some other plans i might do something a little different next week and i am currently working out scheduling and seeing if i can make it work so uh stay tuned on that and i'll let you know but just don't be surprised if it gets changed up a little bit and like the string like the deadline will probably remain for monday as usual but the uh stream video might not be until like tuesday or wednesday okay so anyway that's what's going on there uh what is the deadline set to right now right now it is set for next monday at noon central standard time yep but if it changes i will let you know otherwise assume that it remains noon central standard Stronius asks us watches while addressing your feedback do you think it's better to edit what we've done so far or start over using a combination of what we did and your feedback as inspiration. Uh, Citronius, uh, let's take a look at yours. It also depends. Oh, uh, you can start with what you've got. You've got enough good stuff going on. Um, but also be open to be open to uh, you know changing things around. Um, I, I'd also not mention this, but these two are like basically the same size on the same plane these two are basically feel like they're the same size on the same plane those two are basically the same size so let's break that up so that we have more of a zigzag pattern with the tops of these and with their placement and that will lead you through there otherwise i feel like boom plane boom plane boom plane and that doesn't really invite you into the image where 
a winding zigzag S curve does. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's either way, whatever works for you. I sometimes you do one, sometimes you do the other one. If you can't get it to work one way, do it the other way. Uh, no clear answer on that. Sorry, bud. Yeah. Uh, radical archive. Oh yeah, I was gonna bring up a topic. <laughs> it's actually this came up twice within the last two or three days talking to different people, and I wanted to talk about it here on the stream. Uh, I'm also talking about references. So this is it. Uh, a fellow uh, messaged me and said, "Hey, uh, I feel like when I am." drawing from my reference that I'm just altering the colors and the mood or the lighting and that's kind of it and it feels really dull it feels really kind of shallow to do that it's not real creative or meaningful and we went back and forth and I was trying to figure out you know why that was and it, this is what's going on and it happened to somebody else like two days later. And I think it might be happening to some of you guys as well. And that is this. If you do a creative process where say you want to do this scene. You know, you want to do this environment scene. And so you go, oh gosh, uh, I want to do one. And then you go out and you find some references of creepy cemetery and then you go get the cemetery photo and then you start changing the cemetery stones into towers but a little bit you're kind of like i just feel like i'm kind of copying this well why because you found your reference before you did your sketches and then that way what's happening is the reference is actually driving the image direction rather than the image direction driving the image. And that's why you have to do your sketches first. Uh, even, even if you don't know to hardly how to draw something like these towers, maybe you don't know architecture, and you just do a rectangle, that's fine. But figure out what your layout is. Figure out what your composition is. Figure out kind of what you want in the scene. And then you go find references that can aid you in that. But if you find the references first, the brain sort of... Brrr, it, it, it pulls down its creativity. If it, it kind of puts blinders on, right? If it sees the reference first, it, it's harder for the brain to imagine something other than that. You see the same thing with people that... If you watch a movie that was based on a book. When you read the book, you're going to picture the way that the movie showed it. If you never read Lord of the Rings and you go read Lord of the Rings, you're going to picture Bilbo and Frodo and Gandalf and everybody as you saw them in the movie, if you saw the movie. It, it just works that way. It gets ingrained in us. So I'm going to encourage you, make sure that you're doing plenty of concept sketches and your idea directions and your notes before you go find your your good references otherwise they can just sort of take over the whole image direction and you're going to start losing creativity and it's going to get harder and harder to bring that creativity back into it once your brain's kind of put the the blinders on so i'm just encourage you to do it that way yeah radical uh, how many times have you drowned in an ocean of reference images i think we all have uh, I, I, no, I'm also saying that because I've done that before and I've even done that on, you know, professional images. I couldn't, I would say I couldn't, I didn't take the time to do enough sketches to begin with. And I just wanted a kind of quicker answer. So I went and I found some references and then I was like, oh, the references will give me an idea. But once I got the idea, my brain sort of just locked into that and it was way harder to try to think of something outside of that. And uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, hold on, Swatches. Uh, do sketches before hunting for ref. 
Yes, uh, but we're talking about rough sketches. We're talking about simple composition sketches. And not... I, I probably would just do some basic shapes that I maybe want for a tower. And I'd probably put some notes about textures I was interested in and that sort of thing. Uh, then I would go find it. Uh, then I would go find stuff and and match them into it. And I would adapt the reference into the... Yeah, that's actually a good word. You're adapting the references into the image rather than adapting the image to match the reference. And the fact is, if you don't have a direction, you're automatically adapting the image to the, uh, to the reference. Because it doesn't have a direction to begin with. So, yeah, you do your, uh, your rough sketches to lay down your ideas, what I would call your ugly board, okay? They're not going to be used. They're not final. They're not pretty. They put down all of your ideas. It's just kind of a brainstorm. And you put those down there. And then you figure out which ones you kind of like. And then you go find references to flesh those out and add the authenticity of different pieces of realism into them. And then that's where you start painting your more final pieces out of it. Yeah, so hopefully that helps. Yeah, uh, I would not say don't use references uh, because that's stupid. If you don't know how to draw something, you're not going to just suddenly learn how to draw it by sheer willpower you either know what it looks like or you don't and uh, if you don't know what it looks like go find a picture of it uh can i join in on the final submissions uh week even if i did not submit for this week absolutely yep you know some people are just very busy this week and they couldn't get uh, sketches in or they just learned about the challenge and yeah it's just a bonus for those people that could get something done and submitted and then they get a little feedback but uh, that's that's sort of the the extra that they get. Uh, I'm gonna pull up something and kind of show you guys the process that I was talking about. Just do a little painting here. So I'll pull this up in Photoshop. I sketched this out the other day. So I have a uh, collection here of let's see, that's color. Yep, of lines. Those are turned down. I'll turn them up so you can see them easier. So here in Photoshop, I just have a grid on a top layer and I have uh, some lines that I sketched. So just sketching out basic landscapes. Just in some of these like unusual forms. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these. I'm not sure what they are. But uh, just some interesting collection of shapes. And some of them, I started thinking about them a lot more. Uh, and I started fleshing out a lot more on these bottom ones, but. Hey, that's okay. So like this, you know, I figured out my composition. I have some ideas of how I'm gonna approach it, but then I go find some references. So like here, I've put in colors on these tops too, right? So here we go. Uh, not a lot of detail going on with these. Mainly going for value, color, and kind of mood. All right, just setting that up and following my, uh, and following my sketch. Not not really, really tight, but, you know, basically. The idea is that this is the first pass. Uh, then I'll figure out the ones that are the most promising, that I like the most. And then I can come back and uh, do more work on them if I feel like they have more merit. But what I'll do is get some references. Oh, that's not one. Uh, pull out. Maybe that was one. Oh, that's somewhere else. Oh, here we go. So, like, here. I, uh, I made a folder, refs, uh, environments, here we go, and so we've got like this, just a lot of different kinds of moods, color schemes, landscapes, you know, just a whole collection, and I, you know, pull them off of Google or whatever, wherever I came across them, I thought they had some neat stuff. So uh, what I'll do is just come out here and I grab one of these and pull it over here. And then I start, you know, using some of those colors and start using some of those textures and, and putting it over here. Did I draw this scene? No, I didn't even know of this scene in, until, you know, I started putting the colors in there. 
So I'm adapting this reference into that image. I didn't see this and think, well, I want to do another coast. You know, I want to do another coastal scene. How can I do that? No, this is a better way to do it, right? You're adapting it over. Like, I didn't even think originally of this as water. I, I think to start with, uh, this was going to be like the you know, west out in here in America. Like, these are canyon towers and this is all red dirt and stuff. But I saw that and I was like, that's an unexpected direction. But it could work. So I did that. Um, this one, same colors, right? Yeah, like I, I did not once think that this could have snow in it. But like, hey, that could be kind of cool. So I'm using the same sort of colors, but it's not the same image. Uh, it's not even that close to being the same image. Um, now we've got kind of like, a, instead of, a, you know, way far background, we've got some sort of red glow coming up through these and uh, put some trees up here. So that is a good way to do it. And hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how to approach it. And Uh, it's nice to have a window into a pro's work area. <laughs> well, that's how it works. Uh, yeah, a lot of it, if you certainly haven't been into it a lot, uh, into the art and, and digital painting, uh, then it is systems. It's learning how to approach things the right way. And I'm, just, I'm thinking about doing a series on that. Just how to start images. There's a lot of different ways that you can start an image. And they all have their pros and cons. And it's worth learning and knowing different tactics. It's kind of like you're going to play a game of, oh, I'm going to say American football. You know, you have to know your different plays. What, what positions can you play? How can you get the ball down the field? They're all about getting the ball down the field. But how do you go about doing that? Well, you could, you know, have this guy run out this way and you could fake to that guy and then you could pass it to this guy or you could pump fake and then you could throw it or there's all these just combinations and combinations and combinations of how you achieve that. And some are better and some are worse for different circumstances. In the same way, it's like, do you start with lines and then move to grayscale? Well, yeah, sometimes. Do I start with lines and go straight to color? Yeah, sometimes. Do I do, I do it? You know, this way or that way. Yeah, sometimes. So we can go over those sometime. And that would be good. Uh, can you do a series on traditional media as well? Yeah, I, I want to. And I'm thinking next month, May. I think May I'm going to have some traditional stuff coming up. And it's also a good chance I'm going to be doing some traditional base stuff for the Patreon content coming up as well. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm eager to get back into doing more traditional stuff. I've been doing a little painting on the side, and it's obvious that I have not been painting in years, and it's been awful. Uh, and I just need to put more time into it. Uh, Sam asks, uh, for a collection of thumbnails like this, do you pick a single reference to apply to a specific thumbnail, or do you rifle through internet for images you like the same theme? Uh, collection, uh, do I pick a... Uh, for this, I'll mainly use, and if I understand you correctly, do I use this, like, one image? Yeah, for this, I'll be like, you know, that has enough information for me to use for this. So I'll do that. Do I pick a single image to apply to a specific thumbnail, or do you rifle through the internet of images you like? Uh, yeah, this one is about doing it faster. This is about mass. You're not trying to make each one of them great. It's about doing, like, an entire page of these. And then figuring out ones that have more promise that you like more. And then you, you move on with those. So I don't want to stop at each one of these and have to go find a reference. And also, this is another thing about using reference. Sometimes it's good not to have good references. And that's counterintuitive. But the closer... A reference is to what you want, the less you think about it and the more you just copy it. See, this one was not what I originally had planned. This was, like I said, originally going to be like a Red Canyon. So I purposely chose a reference that was not a Red Canyon. 
because I would have just copied it. And I wouldn't really come up with anything new. I purposely chose this because that was not at all the color or landscape scene that I had in mind. So you could do that. Um, coming back, I would probably maybe look at some more references in order to add more realism and uh, do details and stuff. Hopefully that answers your question. In other words, do you just gather a pile of images that you like? Yeah, pretty much. Like on this collection, this is just a handful out of a lot. Like if I go into my, uh, my pictures, graphs, uh, environments up here. So, you know, I've got a folder of just lots and lots and lots of of these. And that's that's tiny compared to how many some people have. And then some of them are divided into like, you know, jungle scenes. <laughs> Computer, you didn't put those in order at all. Uh, you know, so you got a lot of these too. And that's actually not even a bad inspiration for uh, for what we're doing now. It's a good combination of like form and then just kind of strange old architecture. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, and then I'll come out here and I'll just grab one and be like, oh, that has some good merit, good merit. And I'm particularly looking for a variety of different colors and different lighting schemes, different moods. So like this one is good. It has a very harmonious color scheme. Some of the other ones have not, right? This is a, more of a split, right? We have red and green, yellow and blue. Uh, so this has uh, a contrasting color scheme. So that could be really cool too. That can make for some neat images. Uh, that's a painting. Uh, I can't remember who out did that offhand, but that's a that's a beautiful, uh, quick painting there. Um, so yeah, it's worth going out and just, you can Google just like beautiful landscape photos. Be most beautiful places in the world or magical places or strange places and you can find some really great uh, websites that have archives of you know pictures like these and uh, go just go grab a lot of them and like this this has uh some nice colors in it uh, this is somebody else's artwork they meshed a couple of pictures but it goes together um good color schemes and you can you can adapt that to any number of other things that has nothing to do with what that origin is. Why? What What matters about this? The color relationships. The colors work together correctly. And that's what you're looking for. These colors work correctly together. And you're trying to borrow that dynamic, not the content. Um, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, Michael says, uh, everyone is switching to digital, and I feel like uh, taking the traditional way will benefit me more in the long run since it'll be valued more. Uh, Michael, uh, I'm, I'm with you. I think everybody should be doing some traditional on the side, at least on the side. And I'm okay, and I understand why a lot of the industry is moving to digital. It is so much more user-friendly and... It is um, just more elastic, plastic, you know, has more plasticity to it. It's easier to, you know, move things around, that sort of stuff. But there are certain mental connections that you make through traditional media that you don't make through digital nearly as well. Uh, coming up, some of the lessons coming out for the patrons on the new tiers, they will have some more traditional um, things, uh, assignments and homework in those, because I feel like a lot of people are missing that. So yeah, always a benefit from that. And if you're living anywhere near or, or in a big city, a lot of cities have like a, a local drawing group or, um, a life drawing group or a poetry drawing group, something along those lines. And it'd be worth checking into that. Even if you just go up there occasionally and, and draw some portraits on life. Just to get you out from away the computer, uh, don't take your digital pad with you. Um, just try doing it, you know, in pencil or charcoal or something like that. Yeah. 
Paul says, uh, how many time did you spend on the coloring or thumbnail? Sorry, I have a bad lag. Uh, I didn't say, and I can't say that I thought to uh, <laughs> look at the time when I did them. So, I, you know, I can do one right here. Let's see. Um, which one am I kind of feeling? Oh, we could just do the next one. So let's look at environments. And I know I have like some something going across here. So I'm just kind of trying to match that up. That either needs to be, let me zoom in on this so you can see it a little easier. So I'm looking at this. Uh, originally, I was thinking like maybe some stone things. Uh, but these could even be like trees. These could be like some sort of weird big tree thing coming across. So I can either go something that has some stone colors in it. Or it can go with something that has like trees. Even something like that could work. Let's do that. These are the... Uh, Karst Mountain. Oh, I forget. I didn't actually open that up. I just space barred it. <laughs> uh, so let's grab that and drop him over here. Drop him over here. Uh, yep. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here. Now I've got to where I'm really liking uh, this brush right down here. The uh, hard elliptical. So you look at it, uh, it's just a round brush and squeezed it down. So it's a little pancake of a brush. Put it at a, an angle, slight angle to it. And I don't know, it just, it gives me something a little different. And it makes me work in planes a lot more. Uh, like the flat planes of stuff. And you can see that, you can see that pattern. That's what I used for these. And sometimes you can just, you know, do that if you want it to go the other direction, of course. Yeah, so there you go. But I will start by just coming down here, uh, getting on the right layer, use this. Uh, I'm going to just mask out this area. Um, I mean, just select it because I just, that's the only area I really need. And then I will actually start by not that brush. That's what I'll put most of it in with. I'm going to start with my big round brush just to put in some tones. And most of that is white. I don't necessarily need to go that white. So I'm going to put a little color back here. And then the background. Oh, this is something else too. Um, I want to check like my eyedropper is set on point sample. See, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, this has lots of little color variations in it. You get down to the pixels. And it really, really depends what pixel you pick up as to what color you get. And I don't want it a point sample. I want it like five by five average. It's going to get five pixels and average it out. And that's going to be much closer to what I actually see with my eyes. Because like that, that was too light and too blue. It should be. That was the color I was expecting. That color there. Okay, so I'll do that. Um, I think this back tower is probably going to be in this region. And that's where I can start switching over to maybe uh, to this fellow. I don't know why he made him so big. So let's put that here. Put this back here. Just kind of kill out some of that going on. Uh, that's fine. We can have some, uh, some green down here. Oh, I also meant to put... A variation of this brush where did window brushes da, 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 da. brushes no no not br I need brush settings yeah there we go uh no get rid of that and I want my color dynamics on I get so used does that have color dynamics in it oh it does okay I thought it didn't all right but it, it does never mind I'm blind. <laughs> All right, so yeah, and we got some color dynamics. Uh, now this one is much closer to us, man. I'm not sure that I'm loving this shape. Uh, I think I'm gonna change that up a little bit. That's a great thing about this little sketch. You know, you can just get rid of it. I also put a uh, little mask right here on the, the my lines layers, 
and then like that all right i'm gonna just adapt it boom it's gone i'm gonna i'm gonna make this this that's gonna be something different all right so there we go and there we go so now this is going to be uh we're just gonna throw in some variations kind of scribbling along and then This guy back here. Now I'm thinking on these guys, that's sort of at this ground maybe. I like the idea that this is some sort of collection of big wide trees it's got like this tree coming down here something like that uh, then this tree is here in the foreground actually you know what kind of tree it reminds me of and i didn't intend for this until i was just now thinking about it the uh john carter if you've ever seen that movie uh, they go to the special place uh, there on Mars. Because, spoilers, John Carter goes to Mars. That's that's the whole point of the movie. And uh, there's this tree that comes up, and he's like... And it's really interesting. Martian tree. I'm basically just going to be doing as much as I can with this little brush. So I'm, I'm not going to be switching it out very much. Mm -hmm. Uh... Yeah, this could be like more brown under here because this is just the uh, limbs, right? Yeah, so that can be down there. And then I think we need to have uh, some texture, some sort of taller grass things going on here. And maybe some of this is catching more light. So, yeah, this is where I'm differing from that a little bit. That's just a little light, like, coming across here. Then maybe it's catching more shadow, you know, there along the bottom. And then I want to bring this guy back into it. Now, if these trees are everywhere, right, then uh, by the time it gets up here, you know, th these are better shapes. I should take a little more inspiration from that and uh, break these up into some more interesting shapes. And then I'm thinking that some of these trees are back here too, right? So we can we can show some of some of them up there too. But they're so far away, they're they're pretty much just silhouette. Yeah. And then maybe you just have a little spot here or there. Uh, for these, yeah, we don't want to establish uh, too much, but throwing just a little more color into those, right? 
And if I did use another brush, I could come down here and get uh, somebody like this. Add a little texture to it. And if I'm going to have this here, then we probably want to do it with. This is like a stony area, you know? And so it should have. Should have like a stone. Along there somewhere. And you can keep playing with it. I mean, you can come in here and start doing this, like finding more interesting shapes out of this thing. That would be one of the next things that you'd want to do. So, yeah, you got, you got like that, and then, you know, I'll, I'll grab uh, Stefan's idea, and mm, I've got some birds. We've got, <laughs> we've got green birds. <laughs> so that's not ideal, because the, the tree's like in the dead center of it. Um... Oh, uh, this is also where maybe we could have some, like vines hanging down off these. That could be, that could be okay, right? And we have like a big vine, and this little vine's kind of like wrapping around him. And it's got some like little leaves coming off of it. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit, and then maybe there's some uh, little vines on these guys too, wrapping around, hanging around this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you could just block them in, in like that. So that's, you know, that's about as long as they take, and that's what I do for one. And then you know, move on to the next one. Keep going. Uh, this is also something that you could do, you know, if you're playing a movie. It doesn't take a lot of thought, but you're picking up on stuff along the way, you know. Um... Yeah, it's really straightforward with that tree. I feel like there needs to be like more significance to this tree somehow. Because it's just right there in the center. Or it needs to to lead up to something. Um you could add uh you could add like you know, like a path, you know. Path like coming up here, kind of leads to that tree, and then if you put a little shadow, along that, give a little thickness to it. some of the grasses kind of break up that shape. Hmm. And... Color scheme's like really limited. I think like pop in some sort of little plant color. Some sort of a little guy over there that's got a little pop to him. 
little yellow things. These could have like maybe some sort of fruits or something hanging off of them. Yep, that would work as well. Ah, oh, that's probably too far away to get them very big, though. Yeah. Anyway, um, or maybe they're multi-tiered. That might even be more interesting for uh, the shape, though. You know, like this comes up here and it has like. Like that. That's a little different. We've got a uh, a who, you know, Doctor Zeus tree. I'm reworking this a lot more than I reworked those other ones. I'm just playing around with it. So, yeah. Uh, Swatches, uh, do you experience some problems with eyes during digital painting? Yeah, at the end of the week, I usually do. Uh, Fridays, like last Friday, it got... Uh, it got to where it almost brought on a migraine. I, I definitely had to get away from the screen for a while and put, uh, put something over my eyes to keep them from straining too hard. So you got to keep that in mind. You got to take breaks, and uh, that is something to be aware of. That is something that you have to deal with when you're behind a computer too much. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like uh, you know that's fine as a first pass. Uh, like a multi-tiered tree um, could be a thing. And uh, it, it probably doesn't work excellent for this particular concept uh for this composition i mean but yeah that that's what this stage is about it's finding out this kind of what works and what doesn't work along that line yeah all right well it's nine o'clock we're two hours in um i think we covered a lot of good stuff this week and hopefully we uh, got some answers for you guys and how to go forwards with your projects so I uh, appreciate everybody joining, and of course, come out to the Facebook group, get the full details if you want to get into the challenge. Well, so just a lot of feedback out there. You know, post your stuff out there, uh, and I will answer as I can, but likely somebody else will give you some feedback or critique or, or some help uh, before I even notice that it got posted. So that's also uh, an idea. But uh, everybody that's joined me, have, hey, Frederico, I didn't know you were uh, in here. But good to have you then. Zeb, too. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that is it for now. And I should probably see you next week. I'll give, keep you up to date on the Facebook group about uh, if plans get changed for next week. But otherwise, that's what we're doing. Uh, big post out on the Patreon page. Patreon.com slash swatches about some of the new stuff. I was talking about the new tiers and some of the new content that's coming out over there. The Mood ebook. I'll go ahead and let you know. The Mood ebook. Uh, a lot of you know that I've been talking about it for a while. I was going to have it as a reward on one of the Patreon months. But as I got into it, I realized it was much bigger than I could do and release in a month. So I'm going to be doing it per month, a chapter. And I'm going to be doing one chapter or maybe even two chapters because some of them are definitely shorter than others. But this first month is chapter one. Uh, this month, April, will be chapter one, which is lighting. How lighting affects mood. And breaking down into it. I'll give you more details coming up. But if you want to get in on that and get that, 
then you know come out become a patron at least the ten dollar level you'll get that content and at the end of the year or whenever i finish up all of the chapters then i will compile them together for the the full book but if you want to get it in pieces installments along the way you need to get that way otherwise you're not going to be able to get your hands on that content until the whole thing is finished all right well thanks again everybody great to have you uh looking forward to the finals and i will see you next week so you see you next time keep drawing